Namaste. It really doesn't matter whether you are in the east, the west, the north or south. It doesn't matter where you're located in this world. Whether you've been born in one of the most developed countries or you live in a nation that is in abject poverty. It doesn't even matter if you yourself and your family are economically very prosperous or extremely rich, or extremely poor. It doesn't matter whether you're 90 or 9. The only thing that you need to understand is that the objective of your life, my life, all our lives is the same. And this objective can be said in a very simple word. Think about it. What is it that everyone in this entire world wants to be? We want to be happy. Ami khushi bhuna chaanjo. Huh? Ami isha, ami isha bante yeh sunne aao ma. Khushi bhuna chaanjo. Think about it. The more you think about the simple word, the more you dive into its meaning, the more you will realize how that is exactly what you want out of life. We just want to be happy. That's all we want. It's as if we're all standing in a bus stop right now. We've all been in a bus stop and there are other people around and we ask them, why are you here? Nobody tells you, I'm here to catch the red bus. Whichever red bus comes, I'm going to jump in. Or I'm here to catch the bus that has the sleeping coach. If it has a sleeping seat, I'm getting into that bus. Or the bus that is showing Chakka Panja the movie, I'm going to get into that bus. If you ask the people in a bus stop, they will say, I'm waiting for the Biratnagar bus, the Pokhara bus, the bus to Janakpur. They want to get into the bus that will take them to the destination where they want to go. What about your life? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever taken the time to think that in life, today, right now, this moment, you are standing in a bus stop? Do you know which bus you want to get into? Do you know the mountain you need to climb that will give you <coughs> the happiness that you seek? I wish it was simple and a cookie cut model whereby I could just give you that you need to do this, 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 and you will be happy. I wouldn't be here. I'd be a very rich man owning an island somewhere if I could do that. But just suppose, I'm sure we all had lunch. Someone over here, I love Nepali food, and today is Saturday, the day of my Nepali food. So someone brings alu tama, you know, alu tama, the bamboo shoot, in a big, you know, cooked in a big bowl, gives each one of you a bowl and puts the alu tama in your bowl. And you have it, and they come and say, How is the alu tama? Someone will say, this was the best alu tama I have ever had in my life. Some will say, it was a little too spicy. Some will say, it needed a little more spice. Some will say, a little more salt would have been better. <coughs> While some will say, a little less salt maybe next time. It's the same alu tama. What is the difference? The difference is the taste in your palate. Life is exactly the same. I wish it was so happy that we could all do the same thing to be happy and say this is what, what I need to do and I will get the happiness I see. In my experience, I have seen that there are five ingredients that go into happiness, like the many ingredients that go into the alutama. How much of each ingredient you require is up to you and that determines your unique happiness formula. Not your mother and fathers, not your brother and sisters, not your sons and daughters, but your happiness formula. So the first thing you need to do to climb your happiness mountain is know which mountain to climb. Whether it's Nims Purja or Apa Sherpa, they first determine Adru, Yubarsa, Everest, Bocharne, Ya, Golagiri, Chakne. Then they seek all that they need to climb that mountain. That's just a mountain. In your life, the first thing you need to do is know what is your unique happiness formula. If you don't know that, you'll be running around. Sometimes you'll be running after your parents' happiness formula, sometimes your colleagues, sometimes society. And then you'll wonder, why do I feel so hollow? Why am I not getting the happiness I seek? Because you do not know where you want to go. 
So let us first talk about what are these five ingredients. The first ingredient of happiness is family and friends. Sat bhai ra parivar. For some of us, family and friends is very, very important. Today, after many, many years, Anil Shah is nervous standing here because for the first time, in a long, long time, maybe the first time ever, I have my family, my daughter and my wife sitting here in the audience, which is unique for me. For some of us, family and friends is very important. Everything we do is centered around the core of our family and friends. You see a nice movie, you think, I'm going to come back here and see it with my friends. Only for the bazaar, sir. You want to go somewhere, you think, how do I go with my friends and my family? For some of us, our friends and family have to call our office and our secretary and say, a hey, parent-teacher meeting Thursdays are lehi dehoi, not to go dehi Yeah, I'm sorry, dinner khan la Friday gai rahe, to die dehi ma lehi dehoi, otherwise he's not going to show up. What about you? How important is family and friends in your happiness formula? The second ingredient of happiness. Yeah, big smile. Money and economic wealth. Dhan, dhan, dhan. For some of us, the more money we have, the happier we are. All day we work to make money. Money in the bank, soon katitola, how many plots of land, how many shares, and all night we sleep and we dream of all that money and rolling in all of it. And so happy we are. Oh, big smile. Under the mask, see. But many people come to me and ask me, I know, Anilji, also with the TK Satari, you poisa or kushi ko samband ke ho? Poisa ta papi pe palni madhya matre hai, na? Money gives you heart attacks, ulcers, you know, all sorts of illnesses. How does money make you happy? I don't even understand that. What about you? How important is money in your happiness for me? The third ingredient of happiness is health. Nobody wants to be unhealthy. I'm talking about how much are you invested in being healthy. Physically healthy, emotionally healthy, psychologically healthy. I talk to a lot of youth and a lot of them after I talk about happiness comes to me and say, die, die, die. When we are your age, we'll talk about health, die. Well, 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 die. What I know so many people who are 14, 15, 12 years old even, who say, we understand exactly what you mean. This body is a temple. I'm very careful about what I put in my mind, what I put in my heart, and what I put in my stomach. Health is extremely important to me. I meditate, I do yoga, I do exercise, and all sorts of things. And that's what makes me happy. What about you? How, how important is health and being healthy in your happiness for me? The fourth ingredient is power, status, and authority. For some of us, very, very important. Anil Shah would have been a very disappointed man today if I got up here and didn't see so many people pick up their cell phones to take a picture. And if I heard people whispering, I you me ko, huh? <laughs> How do you think Raja Shamalji would feel if he got off at New Road Gate and walked all the way to Judah Samsev and nobody came up to him and said, Dai, you can selfie Oh, Raja Nai, film Pele Ai Raja, Mahanaik and all that. What would he do? Get into his car, call three producers and say, Chita Dite Birshu Yosasap, Hill Manon Bari Kill. But I also know so many people who come up to me and say, Anilji, we want to work in your teams. We want to be part of the initiatives that you are driving. We will work very hard. Kanma Kho Thodai Nai, we will never let you down. But, if I have to go and do all these sorts of things, it makes me sick, it gives me fever, it makes me vomit. I will work very hard, I will deliver the results. But power, status and authority is a demotivator for me. What about you? How much power, status and authority do you need to be happy? The fifth ingredient of happiness is your relationship with God and the greater good. We know so many people who are running around doing so much for their neighborhood, for, the, for their society, for their nation. We wonder, what are they doing? They have no time for their family, for anything else, but they seem so happy. We all have people in our families. If there is a um, Nuaran or a Pasni or a Bia or someone dies and we have to go to the ghat, we're all looking, where is that uncle, that auntie? She knows everything because she's there in every function of ours and she's helping everybody and she's so happy and he, oh, he's so happy doing it. And the other is we have so many conversations. Today I have had a day full of conversations, just like you have. 
But when was the last time you sat down alone, even if it was in the toilet, closed your eyes, looked inside you, and had a conversation with the God who lives inside you, your Atma, with yourself? When was the last time you talked to yourself and said, when was the last time this Atma was connected with that Paramatma? What is how important this greater good is God in your life? These are the five ingredients of happiness family and friends, money and economic wealth, health, power, status, greater good in God. What I need you to do, not now, but when you are home alone today, is take a piece of paper and write these five ingredients down. Family and friends, money and economic wealth, health, power and status, greater good and God. Put 100 on top and then divide that 100 in terms of how important each of these ingredients is in your life to make you happy. You're not going to show it to anyone, but you need to know, no? You don't have to tell your mom and dad or your son and daughter or your brother and sister, but you yourself need to know that I need money, 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 I need to be happy. You may pretend to the world you don't, but you must know yourself. If money doesn't make you happy and family and friends make you happy, why are you running around like a headless chicken in your business, in this bank, in this job? And wondering, my God, I earned so much money, so much bonus, I've got another new car, but where's the happiness? Because that's not what's making you happy. Focus on what is, which are the ingredients that you need to be happy. In those five ingredients, divide the hundred. Why do I say do it alone, do it at night? We see children before they go to Montessori. Now they put them in Montessori at an ungodly age of three. See, meet a child before Montessori. That kid will do whatever they want. They're running around. They want to go to the bathroom, they want to go to the bathroom. They want to eat, they're eating. They sleep, sleeping, talk, talking, cry, crying. You put them in a Montessori. Meet the same kid after three months. The child has learned to put on the mask. One mask for the teacher, one mask for the friends, one mask for the parents, one mask for the brothers and sisters. From that age to the age, whatever you are now, just imagine how many masks you have put on. You have put on so many masks that when you look at your soul, you do not realize yourself who you are because the soul that you are looking at is the soul you think you should be. Take off all those masks. It's your life. You have one life. Don't lead it for your parents. Don't lead it for society. Don't lead it for anybody else. Lead it for yourself. And to do that, you need to take off all these masks, put these five ingredients, put 100 on top, and then determine how much each ingredient will get of that hundred. And you will see before you what you need in your life to be happy. Not in your friends, not in your colleagues, not in your parents, in your life. And that's the only life that really matters. Because unless you are happy, you are not going to make anyone else happy around you. When we ride, go on a plane and it's about to take off, what does the air just say? In the event this aircraft is despecialized and you are traveling with old people or young children who need assistance, first, put the oxygen mask on yourself and then help the other people. So the first thing you need to be is selfish and you need to put on that piece of paper what are the ingredients that make you happy? Then you will see before you the mountain that you need to climb to be happy. And I can fully understand if that mountain is in Australia or is in America or is in the UK or is in Japan or in Korea. It doesn't have to be in Nepal, but at least you will know which is the mountain you need to climb. But once you know that this is the mountain I need to climb, it doesn't mean you're at the summit, you're at the base of the mountain looking up and the world looks big. What do you do then? To be truly happy, it is not just enough to know what will make you happy. You need to know how to get those things, those ingredients into your life so that you can attain that happiness that you seek. And for that, again, do not look at Google Dai or Google Bhai or whatever. Stop, close, inside. Look inside you and see what are your core competencies and strengths. 
These core competencies and strengths have been yours since you were born. Some of us are extroverts and love to come up here and talk. Some of us hate to do this. Some of us are good in mathematics, some of us are not. Some of us are good in cognitive thinking, some of us are not. You need to look inside you and find out what is your core strength. Not what you think it should be, not what society expects it to be, what, what is it? As I said, I talk to a lot of youth. And I have yet to meet a youth when after talking, sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes small groups, and I ask, hey, Bhaini, what is your favorite subject? Bhaini looks at me and says, Dai, I'm a manu. I'm a manu. I'm a manu. I'm a manu. Favorite. I'm a manu. I love, I love mathematics, Dai. I love mathematics. That's damn good. Very, very good. I mean, ladies in STEM is what we need. Yes, Dai, I love mathematics, Dai. I'm kidding. I can't pass that. I fail all the time. I fail it. Hello. If you fail mathematics, you hate mathematics. You hate your math teacher. You hate the room in which mathematics is being taught. And you hate the idiot who invented mathematics. The most useless thing under the sun. You're in a class. You hate mathematics. Your friend loves mathematics. Teacher comes in. You're trying to hide. He's jumping up and down trying to answer everything before even the equation is put onto the board. You're like, wow, this guy's a genius. I must cheat from him on the examination to pass. Subject changes. Next subject is English. You're jumping up and down. You know everything. The genius next to you is hiding under the table. And you say, what happened? That such complex math problem you were solving. Why are you hiding? And don't talk. Kalu achher bhaisi banabar. I don't understand the world, what's happening up there. It doesn't mean that one of you is stupid and the other is intelligent. It just means your core competencies are different. Now, if I take the person good in English and put them in a role that requires hardcore mathematics and the person who's good in mathematics in a role that requires communication in English, what is going to happen? It's like telling a fish to climb a tree and telling a monkey to swim in the water. You put the monkey in the tree and the fish in the water and suddenly they're both heroes. The scenario is the same, the tree is the same, the water is the same. You need to find out whether you're a monkey or a fish. Because if you're a fish, don't keep, go through your life trying to attain your happiness formula by trying to climb a tree. So once you know what your core competencies are, your core strengths are, you take those and you take your happiness formula and you dovetail those two in. And wow! Bhatti Mansa. There's brightness that fills your life. And then you see, wow, this is the life that I was seeking. This is the life that I want, in which happiness is the mountain that every step, every day, I move forward towards the summit. So as I said right in the beginning, it doesn't matter whether you're in the east or the west, the north or the south, whether you're in the most developed country or in one of the poorest nations in the world. It doesn't matter if economically you and your family are very rich or very poor. It doesn't matter whether you're 90 or 9 or somewhere in between. Once you know what is your core competency, once you know what is your unique happiness formula, and you put those two together, the smile not only happens here, the smile not only happens in the beat of your heart, but that's when your soul starts to smile. Muskan Atma Atma Bhattavasana. And that's what gives you the glow. That will make sure that every day you wake up wanting to face the day ahead of you. So once again, please find out what your happiness formula is. Find out what your core competencies are. And I look forward to journeying from forward together with you, all of us, with big smiles on our souls. Thank you very much. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please do subscribe to iCrafters. Hit the notifications button so you know when I post and do like this video and share. Thank you very much. See you on the next episode of iCrafters.